Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks and you are checking out a Logic Pro X tutorial video on ADSR sounds. So this video is continuing with looking at some of the new updates in the recent update for Logic Pro X, the 10.2.1, which you see there. This is the third video that we've done and this one's gonna be detailing all of the new changes to the native plugins inside of Logic X. So in my opinion, this part of the update, it, it may not be as flashy as the last update when they gave Logic users alchemy, but this is some of the things they've done is huge, in my opinion. It makes Logic more professional right out of the gate, right out of the box. You don't need, or right out of the download. <laughs> I guess that term is going to become archaic one day. But um, th there's some great features in the stock plugins. Uh, specifically, I'm, I'm absolutely loving and adoring what they've done with the stereo delay, which will be the first one that we look at. But... They, what they did was they reskinned, so it, the, all the native plugins, the plugins that come with Logic Pro X, are now Retina ready. And they have been updated with the uh, Retina ready interfaces, and some of them also got some changes under the hood with new features. And they are the stereo delay, the tape delay, the sample delay, bit crusher, clip distortion, distortion, phase distortion, the adaptive limiter, the limiter, the single band EQ, auto filter, level meter, multimeter, chorus ensemble, flanger, phaser, end verb, silver verb, and then a few of the other ones like the uh, test oscillator, the correlation meter, and the uh, binaural post, -pro post processing and some of the surround sound stuff. So basically everything got a facelift. In Logic uh, X, you, the, with the first update that came out with Logic X, if my memory serves correctly, they redid the visual for the channel EQ, made it look nice and glossy. And then in a subsequent um, release or update, they updated the compressor. In my opinion, this compressor is one of the best compressors of uh, that comes straight out of the native plugins that are included with the DAW on the market. I'm not, it's not the best, but it's one of them. And I've used uh, Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic, and Live, and I really like this one. It's pretty good with all these different modes. It's it's one of the more uh, kind of in musical and intuitive compressors that come with a DAW. Well, now there are some added plugins, in my opinion, that go into that category. The Channel EQ and Logic is great. You can get good results with it, great results even. And now, in my opinion, the Stereo Delay, which is what we're going to talk about right now, has, it's really upped the ante, um, and it was kind of lacking, actually. This needed the update. So I'll put a picture. I'll put that up on the screen so you can kind of compare if you'd like, in case you already forgot what it looked like. So the first thing you'll notice outside of it looking entirely different is the left and right delay controls. They're very different, and I want to talk about what each of these do. So you have the input. You can actually select the input now, which is kind of nice. You can select if it's left, right, left, right, left plus right, or left minus right. So for instance, let's say you have a sound panned out left you can actually select the input for each of these, like the left, right? It'll actually help control it's the routing of the sound, make it a little bit cleaner, but by default, it'll be left and right. So let's look now moving left to right here. <laughs> uh, let's look at these different values in the actual main knob in both the left delay and the right delay. If you'll remember in the, the old version, you basically had the left delay, and then the, the in the center of the screen, you had the output mix and then the right delay. And then under that, if you chose beat sync or to sync the tempo, you had four different time values. You had half note, quarter note, eighth note, and sixteenth note. Well, you still have all those, and you can toggle between those by clicking on these note values. So for instance, a sixteenth note is over on the left now. On the old one, the sixteenth note was over on the right. So there's an eighth note, a, qu a quarter note, and a half note. Well, there's all these different values here in between them. So this is really cool for Logic users because now we have triplets. Uh, dotted notes, uh, triplets, and dotted notes for each of the four main time values, which is really, really nice. You will have these controls down here where you can do time, if you just do times two, it'll arrow through. See so if, if you don't want to use this way of doing it and you just want to kind of cycle through, you can just hit the, the, the divide by two or the times two. So that's what's going on there, and it works like that for both of them. So let's say you have a time that you like. Let's say you have a eighth note, and then let's say you have a quarter note. Uh, let's do quarter note triplet on the left and right delay. Well, there's now a new feature where you can do stereo link, where now you can be, okay, well, I don't like the eighth, eighth, eighth note tr slash uh, quarter note triplet. Let's try speeding it up. What you can do is just go by times two, and you'll notice it moved both of them at the same time. That's because I clicked the stereo link. Now, this is also helpful if you want to apply, you know, similar 
similar parameters or cuts or changes to both the left and right channels at the same time makes editing things a little bit clicker, quicker. So let me uh, go to the factory default setting. Speaking of that uh, stereo link and then I just touched these uh, the filters, there's now two independent filters for each left and right delay. On the old version, it was just the overall output. So this is great because it allows you to, to actually think about where your source is sitting in the mix, both in the stereo field and in the frequency spectrum. So it made no sense if you had most of your delay on the left and it was basically a little bit of delay on the right and you were cutting or, you know, cutting the lows or cutting the highs evenly to the whole sound. It makes more sense to have that freedom, the filter on each the left and right delay. And you now have that option, which is really cool. Now the next really sweet thing that was updated in this is the global, the routing section over here. So this is huge and this brings this delay into the, the this century. It's kind of ridiculous that logic users had to go, had to either painstakingly create this or they had to go third party for a delay that was easy to use and that was me. I'm personally gonna actually use this a lot more. I don't like to get into the whole review side of things, but if I were reviewing this, in comparison with the old version, I would actually give it a, a more than passing grade this time. So the routing presets make it really easy to do things like ping pong delays. So let's play this guitar with a ping pong going left to right. I mean, that was a pain in the ass to do in the old, the old uh, stereo delay. I mean, that was not easy. You have pan left to right now. To do that with crossfade, with the crossfade rotate left. That's kind of a cool one. Rotate right. So yeah, there's a lot of great things happening. And then of course you have the left output and the right output. It's now independent of uh, of the whole filter and that whole section. So you get the left and right mix, which is really cool. So that's basically, this is the section that was in the middle of the screen on the old one. Then you have feedback and crossfade, which is pretty normal on delay. And they kept that how it was in the old one. So that's the update to the stereo delay. To recap, you have a stereo link control over on the right. You have separate filters for both the left and right delay channels. You have dotted and triplet notes added to your menus. And you also have the routing presets that make it easier to do things like ping pong delay and cross feed and all that sort of fun stuff. All right, let's look at the other delay that got a facelift and that is the tape delay. So I'm gonna load that up right now. All right, so you'll notice that it looks a whole lot like the other one, has that same kind of uh, you know look and feel. You can resize this, of course, just like you could with the stereo delay. Now with the uh, tape delay, it now includes this tape head mode, clean and diffuse, it changes the character of the sound, kind of a fun thing to play around with. The uh, distortion level, if you remember the old one, it's been renamed to clip threshold, which is kind of cool. And then you also have, just like with the stereo delay, you have, you'll notice that there are the dotted and triplet notes, and this menu looks exactly the same. And you also have the divide by and the times to, you know, to speed to actually move things up. So that's all the same. Not a whole lot there that's different. All right, let's go now to the sample delay. We'll do stereo. All right, so this looks different as well. You, the only real difference is you can now switch the delay amount between milliseconds and samples. That's it. Um, and it'll, it'll show in milliseconds and delay samples or delay, which is pretty cool. And you can stereo link, which is nice. So that's not much different. Uh, it's, it's, this is what you'd use if you want to kind of create like a wide mono sound. That's typically what you'd use that plugin for. All right, let's look at the next thing that got a facelift and that's going to be the bit crusher. So let's load that up now. All right. So again, it looks different. It looks a lot better. Uh, same same general controls here, but you will notice with the bit crusher, the mix parameter is now on the main interface. And the modes, instead of being over here on the right and just looking like weird symbols, uh, you also have the fold, they actually have names, fold, clip, and wrap. So clipper, a fold, this will look more familiar if you ever come from a synth like Massive or a lot of the other synths. So the clip level, is now controlled over here. You can also do it in the graph itself, which is pretty cool. So again, you have the down sampling, which is the same, the resolution, one bit to 24 bit, and then the drive, which is going to make it sound much bigger and dirtier. All right, so that's really the only, the main differences actually with the uh, logic, the bit, the update to the bit crusher. 
So let's go now to the next plugin. Let's go to the distortion. So we go to distortion and choose this. So again, it looks different. And the level compensation is now on the main interface as opposed to doing that drop down section. So that's really it. Uh, you also get to see what's going on, which is really nice. So this is quite cool because you can actually get a visual representation of what's happening in your frequencies and the tone, the drive, which is nice. All right, the dynamics. The dynamics were updated quite a bit. We have the adaptive limiter first. Let's load that up. And let's play this. The reason why I was playing it is it now has meter delay compensation, which is nice. So there's these, these three meters that you can see back all in a row, which is really nice. So there's no reduction going on right now. All right, so I have to really push this signal to get that reduction, but it, I was doing that just so you can see everything happening at once. And then also there's now a look ahead knob. There wasn't with this one. If you don't know what look ahead is, it's basically going to tell the uh, compressor, you'll see it a lot in compressors or limiters, they're going to tell it, it's going to tell it to, um, they're going to tell it to kind of look at and analyze the transients coming in. So it can add a little bit of delay to the signal. I typically don't mess around with look ahead a whole lot. Uh, I don't like it because I don't like adding de delay to my signal, but it is there if you'd like to. And the next thing that got a uh, facelift was in the dynamics is the actual limiter itself. So let's see this. Let's actually load that up real quick. And you have the limiter now. So with the limiter, you have, you have uh, meter delay compensation, same thing, gain, release, output level, look ahead. It's really nice that you can do zero second, zero milliseconds, which is really nice. But here you get legacy and precision. So legacy is what used to be. Pre precision is, as the name suggests, it's going to be more precise. It's a little bit uh, quicker on the transients, I would say, when I was kind of testing it. Still severe lax in the presets, but it's gotten a little bit better with those two different modes. It still doesn't hold a candle to fab filters limiter, in my opinion. But all right, let's go to the filter now. And the auto filter, let's load that up. We'll do mono and stereo. Now you'll notice that it obviously looks different, but there's actually a lot of new features inside of the auto filter in Logic. So it has a different, it has a new filter mode. It is this add peak mode, which is kind of a cool filter. So it's kind of nice because then you have these different filters like the low, the high, uh, the band pass. So you got you got some different stuff going on here. It's a little bit different. You also have the uh, four pole low passes, which is pretty cool that you have that new filter shape. Makes it a little bit more, uh, I guess, musical. Kind of adds a nice filter effect, a nice resonance. It pairs nicely with higher resonance amounts, in my opinion. All right, so the next thing that you have is uh, you also have these for the distortion. You also have these three different modes, classic, tube, and scream, and they can be chosen independently from both the pre-filter and the post-filter. That's awesome. Uh, they, they all have their own different little uh, characteristics. I would suggest that you just kind of play around with them to get which filter you want or which one. The scream is very, very intense, so let's actually go to the recall default. We'll set it on scream. So the scream is the most digital, so digital sounding one to me. It's kind of nice, but let's let's actually talk about these little on and off illumination switches. So you can actually independently control the distortion, the LFO, the envelope, and the filter sections by these bypass. So if you don't want the filter, if you don't want the LFO, let's say or the distortion, the LFO, let's say you just want the filter and the envelope controls, you have those. So that's the new features inside of the auto filter. Now let's talk about the, uh, I'm not going to talk about the main metering. I do want to talk about the multi-metering though. So we're going to pull that up. So the multi-meter, I actually have that up on my master strip. So the multi-meter looks a lot different. So you have these different options. You can do peak in the old multimeter. The peak in RMS was kind of embedded in the same 
same part or the same meters as different colors. Now you can actually choose which one, which is nice. So if you just want peak, you can choose peak. And it's just RMS, peak and RMS. And the color is so much better now. It used to be like blue and light blue. Now it's yellow and blue, which is really nice. Uh, you also have the correlation meter down here on the left, on the right. So in the actual analyzer, it's more bands now. It is a, uh, the, the multimeter is a 63 band, which is nice. And you can reduce the bands. Let's say you're trying to see what's going on with just the low end. This helps to kind of narrow in on some of the frequencies if you're trying to find them. So those are the main changes to the analyzer and the Gonai meter as, as well. Let's actually look now at the, we'll go to modulation and we'll look at ensemble. So this looks really cool, it looks different, which is nice. Basically the only thing that changed is the on and off for the LFOs, one, two, and even the random, you have these toggle switches. So it's nice that you can kind of control where things are happening at in the ensemble. And then also the UI is just so much more improved. You can actually click and drag things if you're more of a visual person. And we turn off one of the LFOs, it'll gray out. So LFO, LFO one is, is denoted with the green shape and LFO two, two is the blue. So yeah, the UI is great on this. It's kind of actually one of the cooler ensemble UIs that I've ever seen. Let's actually look at one more thing. Let's look at the uh, phaser, because it has a good amount of changes included into it. So we'll do stereo for it. And you'll notice that the, uh, it has a sync now for the LFO, which is really nice. You can actually sync it, uh, which is pretty cool. You can actually do rates, which is musical rates, which makes it a little bit easier. And then you also have a feedback filter on and off switch. So if you want to introduce a feedback filter into the loop, you can, which is really cool. So outside of that, there's a couple different things like sync LFO switch for the, um, the micro phaser, but I don't want to pull that up because it's just an LFO on and off switch. And some of the other metering plugins for the surround sound have, have some updates as well. But like I said, at the beginning of the video, pretty much every outside of the channel EQ, the linear phase EQ and the compressor, pretty much everything has been tweaked. Uh, before we go, actually, let me go click up on the reverb. We'll look at Enverb. Uh, Enverb has a nice new interface. You can actually click and maneuver the envelope and the attack, the, the decay, the sustain, release inside the actual UI. So I actually, I know it's, it, it, the, the update release didn't actually denote if anything sounded different or if they actually redid any of the algorithms, uh, but it does sound, and this is probably just because I actually spent enough time with it. I never really liked the Logic stock reverbs, but I did spend about 20, 30 minutes tweaking that, and uh, it, I got some good results. I do want to point out that if you're a fan of the plate reverb or the platinum reverb, sorry, the platinum reverb, they didn't reskin that, so I'm assuming that's going to go away in the next version of Logic because they were like, no. Let's look at the Silver Verb. Uh, Silver Verb got a facelift as well. So the controls are all the same. It just looks like the other plugins now. And then let's, uh, Space Designer is going to be Space Designer still. So pretty much everything is uniform with how the uh, plugins look. The ex except for the channel EQ, the linear phase EQ, the compressor, space designer, and then the echo. So they all kind of, the echo and even the uh, delay designer, they all look how they used to look and they didn't get an update. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll respond to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.